Rocky Mountains and today we're going to be learning more about the water cycle by studying evaporation and condensation more closely. Condensation and evaporation are very important parts of the water cycle. Without them we wouldn't have snow and rain and hail as precipitation. To review, evaporation is when water changes from liquid state to a water vapor gas state and rises up into the air. And what causes evaporation? You're right, the sun. Condensation occurs after that water has evaporated into the sky and it starts to cool down and condense and forms clouds. It changes back into a liquid state. But it's really hard to study evaporation because we can't see the water vapor with our own eyes. The same with condensation. We can see the clouds in the sky, but we can't see the process happening. So today we're gonna to use a model to more clearly help us understand the processes of evaporation and condensation. A model is something we can use to study something that might be too big or too large to see clearly. Just like this globe of the Earth is a model of the entire Earth, but this way we can study more clearly all the different countries and aspects of the globe without having to go to space. So today we're actually going to go into my kitchen to more clearly understand condensation and evaporation. Are you ready? Let's go! For today's model, we're not going to be able to bring the heat of the sun into my kitchen, so we'll have our hot water heater to help us replicate the heat of the sun. We're going to need a few other items. Our jar is going to represent our pond. This is where we'll put our water. And later we'll use our plate to represent the sky. So the first thing we need to do is warm up our water. Now make sure you don't do this yourself at home because it can be dangerous using a hot water heater. So if you are gonna replicate this model, you'll need help from an adult. Can you hear it warming up? We'll give it some time to get going. So our next step, once our water has warmed, is to pour it into our pond. Let's go ahead and make some observations of what we observe when this happens. Can you see that water vapor as a gas rising up out of our pond? That is the process of evaporation. But next, how can we create condensation? So remember, the sun heats up the water in our pond and it starts to evaporate as a water vapor. And we saw those vapors rising into the air. But we, now we need our plate, which will represent the sky. We'll put that on top of our jar. And the temperature in the sky is cooler, so as the water vapor rises, it will cool down. In order to represent the cooler temperatures in the sky, we'll use ice on top of our plate. Do you have any predictions of what we might observe as the ice cubes in the sky cool down our water vapor? Hmm. I wonder if we'll see some liquid forming at the surface of our jar as the water condenses. Wow, do you see those water droplets forming at the surface of our jar? That's condensation. In the sky, it would form clouds. Our model is not the perfect representation of condensation, so we won't see clouds forming. But we, if we watch long enough, we might see precipitation. Wow, did you see that drop fall? That's our rain, and precipitation is now happening. Let's see if any more. Oh, there's another one. It's really raining in our model now. Thanks for joining me today to learn more about evaporation and condensation by modeling the processes in my kitchen. I hope you learned a little bit more through this demonstration.